Hello and welcome to this video tutorial where we are going to look at how you can sum every nth row in Excel. So I'm looking at a scenario like I've got on screen where we want to add up these values. So I've got these sales totals and different kind of store locations, shall we say, and they're appearing in every fifth row. So there is some kind of routine to it. But I want to avoid these cells that scatter in the middle. And maybe this is just the way my data's appeared when I import it off my cells database. Just, you know, I could tidy it up, but I want a way of adding up every fifth row the way it is. And displaying the total in cell E1 here. Now, the way we're going to go about this is we're going to use three different functions together. We're going to use a function called sum product, which is an absolute genius function. If you've not used sum product before, try googling or checking out at computergargar.com some sum product examples. It's a really powerful uh, formula. We're going to use one called mod. Um, let me bring up the description to save me a, a job there. Which returns a remind, remainder, sorry, of the numbers divided by divisor. We're going to use that as our way of determining if a cell is in the like, next fifth row on or not. So by dividing it by five, we will know, or by the whatever um, like row change, whatever pattern you're using, we can figure out whether it is or not. And we're going to use row. We will need a function called row to determine what is the row number. Okay. So, for example, as a quick demonstration uh, for now, if I was to type the uh, mod function and I was to give the number as uh, row 5 and then say the divisor is 5, and a closing bracket that will say that the remainder is zero. Uh, once you've divided the two, there's nothing left over. If I said that the row number was row number seven, let's divide that by five, then there's two left over. So, what we want to try and say is that if you divide the row number by five and it comes back with zero, then add it up. If not, then don't. And in this quick example at the moment, I'm typing in the row number. Obviously, we're not going to be doing that. We're going to get Excel to look down a range. And that's what we're going to use the row number for. We're going to get it to look at the, uh, at the cell, pick up the row number, supply it to mod. Mod will check whether we need to add that one or not. And some product is going to do the adding. So hopefully this is making some sense, trying to build up to it here. Let's get stuck into it. Cell E1 equals, and we're going for sum product. So we're going to give it some uh, ranges, and it's going to add them up for us. First thing you want to know is what is your first array? Now this is going to be our test. So we're going to enclose this within some internal brackets here. I'm going to point opening bracket, and I'm going for mod opening bracket so like we saw a moment ago the model ask us okay what number would you like to divide we want to divide row opening bracket then i'm going to select these numbers that i want to test to see what row uh, the cell is in and i'm going to use my f4 key to fix that and make it absolute I'm not planning on copying this anywhere, so maybe a bit of a redundant technique that. But uh, just habits. Closing bracket. That will bring me back into the mod function. Comma. And I'm looking at dividing by five. So I want to know for every fifth row. If you're trying to get every other row, put in two. Every fourth row, put in four. And so on closing bracket so mod is going to 
get the row number, so the first one three for example, try and divide it by five. That's not going to go, so it's not going to add it up. Next one, four, not going to work, not going to add it up. Next one, five, it will do, it will add it up, and so on. Now after the closing bracket for mod, I'm going to put equal zero. When I was demonstrating down here, we notice that if it is the fifth row, it will come back with zero, no remainder. That's what I want. If that's the case, add that one up. It doesn't come back with zero, skip it, move on. The closing bracket, which is the closing bracket for our first array here. Our first array is a test as to see whether we should be adding that cell or not. Now after that I'm going to put a multiplier symbol in to indicate we're looking at multiplying these numbers. And then I'm going to put an opening bracket and I'm going to select the range of numbers again and fix them with F4. So what we're trying to say is basically to add them up, simply it looks strange in this sum product function but add up all of these numbers where the number is the fifth row. We need one more closing bracket on the end, which is to close the sum product function. You can see the bracket is black, indicating it's the last bracket to close. And when I press enter, I'll get an answer. Now at the moment, in this scenario, that's actually the wrong answer. Because what our function's doing at the moment it's adding up the fifth rows. So it's adding up that one, that one, uh, where am I going? This one, and this one. I can see right at the bottom of my screen here it says the sum is 175,000, and that's what we've got. It's adding up the fifth row. So if in your example your data is at the top of your list, like that, then this will work great because it will be the fifth row every five. In this case here, it's not. It is every fifth row, but the total isn't actually in the fifth row. I just want the pattern of every five, starting from number three. So looking at this, I can see the first one is seven, next one is 12. So really, my function's kind of there. It's doing every five. But I just need the row number to kind of go back to. It's just it's just too too high because of uh, the first one's being empty. So I'm going to pop back into my formula, locate the end of uh, the uh, row number here. So just after the closing bracket row number, I'm going to say find out what row it's in, and then take away two. So if it's in row 3, it will be row 1 that comes back. But when it's in row 7, it will come back with 5, meaning it will use it in the formula. That's what we're after. So once again, depending on your scenario, take off or add the relevant number, depending on where your range starts, how many headings or how many blank rows you may have at the top. I'm putting takeaway 2. So when I press enter, now I'm getting that figure. Let's test that. Newcastle, Total, Bristol, London, Manchester. I've got that figure at the bottom. 1,024,000. Brilliant. That seems to be doing the job. I've added every fifth row within that range. Thank you for watching. I hope this tutorial has answered your queries and you will find it useful. Please check out some of our other tips and tricks at computergargar.com. Look forward to seeing you there.